A concept known as adjusted plus-minus ratings has been introduced to evaluate individual players in team sports, based on observed goal differences over a large number of matches. However, the approach does not seem to work well for association football. Why does it not work well and is there anything we can do to improve the approach? Hi, my name is Lars Magnus and on this uh, YouTube channel I explain and evaluate mathematical models for rating football players. In a previous video we looked at how players appearing in the 2016-2017 season of the English Premier League could be evaluated using plus-minus scores. Total uh, plus-minus scores uh, is basically the sum of the goals scored minus the sum of the goals conceded from the perspective of a given player. Normalizing these scores by dividing by the number of minutes played and multiplying by 90 avoids a bias favoring the players that has played many minutes. However, the plus-minus ratings per 90 minutes still ignores the fact that the quality of the opponents and the teammates of a player also influences the observed goal differences and therefore also the rating of a player. For this reason, adjusted plus-minus ratings were introduced, where the ratings are set so that they reflect both the quality of the players on the pitch and the observed goal differences. Let's quickly summarize how adjusted plus-minus ratings were calculated. A match, here illustrated by Chelsea against Sunderland from the last match day of the 2016-2017 season, is divided into segments, with each segment being characterized by having the same players on pitch throughout the segment. The adjusted plus-minus ratings are calculated by estimating a regression model where the left-hand side corresponds to the difference in ratings between the home team players and the away team players, and the right-hand side is the goal difference for the segment. It is not feasible to find ratings that make the left-hand side and the right-hand side fit perfectly for every segment, so instead the model aims to minimize the sum of the squared errors, where the errors are equal to the difference between the left-hand sides and the right-hand sides. The results for this model for the English Premier League 2016-2017 reveals that some players happen to get very high or very low ratings based on very few minutes played. However, removing players with few minutes played does not really solve the big problem with this model. If two players always play together on the same team, player ratings cannot be uniquely determined. The sum of the player ratings would be uniquely determined, but the model would be indifferent to whether both players have a rating of 0, or one player has a rating of plus 10 and the other one has a rating of minus 10. In both cases, the sum of the player ratings for those two players would be 0. For example, in an arbitrary subset of five Chelsea matches played in the 2016-2017 season, Courtois and Alonso always either played together or did not play at all. This means that for these matches, the adjusted plus-minus ratings cannot separate the two players. Now consider what happens if one of the players racks up a few additional minutes while the other player does not. This can possibly give both players extreme ratings, while they really ought to have approximately the same rating based on having played many minutes together. This problem is known as collinearity, and luckily many smart people have come up with different ways of dealing with this in regression models. One solution is known as regularization, uh, to be precise, Tikhonov regularization, uh, also known as ridge regression. When applied in the context of plus-minus ratings, this has become known as regularized adjusted plus-minus ratings. The basic principle is that unless there is evidence to the contrary, all players are assumed to be average quality. Only when there is sufficient evidence in the data the rating of a player should move away from the average. This is accomplished in the following way. Instead of just minimizing the squared error terms, we minimize the sum of the squared error terms plus the sum of the squared ratings times a regularization parameter. The regularization parameter is used to determine how strongly we assume that all players are average. And if we set it to zero, we get back the normal adjusted plus minus rating model. Calculating regularized adjusted plus-minus ratings for the English Premier League of the 2016-2017 season provides the following list of top players. Now, this is a somewhat surprising result. The player rankings for the 2016-2017 season of the English Premier League is almost identical for the regularized adjusted plus-minus ratings 
and for the total plus minus ratings that we started with in the first place. Taking these two ratings side by side, 8 out of 10 players in the top 10 are in both lists, just in slightly different positions. It seems we just went through a lot of trouble for very little. We started with total plus minus ratings, then went to pure plus minus ratings per 90 minutes, then considered adjusted ratings, and then finally came up with the regularized adjusted plus minus ratings. And it seems we have barely moved. However, as opposed to total plus minus, the regularized version should be better at dealing with an increased dataset and to more fairly differentiate between players with very different amounts of minutes played. So instead of just using a single season, let us use eight seasons. And instead of just using the English Premier League, let's add the two top divisions in each of the five big leagues. England, Italy, Germany, Spain and France. Furthermore, let's toss in some matches from the European leagues and some international matches from the World Cup and the European Championship. Now, finally, we have a rating list that looks fairly reasonable, with easily recognizable star players. However, the regularized adjusted plus minus rating, in combination with enough data, is only the beginning of developing a useful objective player rating system. And there is still some way to go before we have a truly interesting player rating. In the first step towards obtaining a truly interesting player rating system, we need to be able to determine whether one rating system is indeed better than another system. Again, this is something that we should try to measure and not just rely on subjective opinion. Evaluating different player rating systems is the topic of the next video in our series on football player ratings. So if you haven't already subscribed to our channel and you would like to follow more videos on this topic, consider subscribing. So see you next time. Until then, take care.